Hello and welcome, this is Type V3 and today I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Crankcase and Deluxe Sideswipe. Now these two figures differ in the sense that Crankcase is a brand new character when it comes to the Transformers movieverse and Sideswipe has been with us since the Revenge of the Fallen movie. However, they both share one thing in common and that is that they are both brand new molds for this Dark of the Moon toy line, so let's check them out. Starting with Crankcase, this guy is definitely not going to win a beauty pageant, but then again, when you're a black on black SUV, I don't think that's the first thing on your mind. However, I will say I am in love with this design because the idea of an FBI based SUV concealing a Decepticon killer under cheap metal just really hits me in all the right places. The plastic headlights and sirens are a nice touch, but the oddly high suspension and excessive undercarriage kind of ruin the look a bit for me. Now, Crankcase also comes with this very cool mech tech weapon, and I say it's cool because it's one that I actually love. Like, first of all, it's been painted nice. It's got black and this brown, and even the claw part here is a, a nice metallic silver. It's got a cool little feature when you uh, pull it back, it turns to a giant claw, as opposed to the blaster that it is. And the last thing I like about it is that it's relatively small compared to other mech tech weapons. I mean, it still looks pretty big, but when Crankcase is transformed, it looks uh, pretty much like a good size. He's got two mech tech ports right at the top. I don't think there's anything else on the vehicle. So you can just plug it there. It does look stupid, and if you are one of those fans of symmetry, you're not going to like the fact that it only plugs on one side at a time. Uh, but that's that. If this is not your sort of thing, which for most people it isn't, I mean, giant guns on the top of a vehicle look kind of stupid, Crankcase also has something else. He also has a, a, a 3mm clip point right here, and if you have another gun, you could always just plug this in instead. And he's got a gun now. Again, this looks stupid, and you probably need another figure with a gun with a clip point on it to, to you fully utilize this, but the option is there if you want that for playability. When it comes to Sideswipe, the biggest change you'll see here is that he is now a convertible and includes a large rear spoiler. With its harsh and angular lines, this is definitely one beautiful looking car. However, this look is completely ruined by the fact that he is unpainted. We are so used to seeing Sideswipe in a beautiful silver metallic paint job, but this guy is just a bare, unpainted plastic. But at least his interior and other bodywork details were sculpted quite well. Now, Sideswipe can roll quite well. Of course, that is to be expected from any sort of vehicle toy you purchase. Uh, one interesting thing, though, is he doesn't have a floor. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I think that's going to be a bit hazardous to any driver there. He does come, however, with the best mech tech weapon of them all, and I love this thing. It's very big, kind of reminds me of a, a big assault rifle slash sniper rifle with that little scope. The very best thing, though, is it has six barrels at the end, so that's very, very cool. When you activate it, it comes out like this, like a blade, so it turns him into a gun blade, which is amazing for any Final Fantasy VIII fan. Uh, he has three mech tech ports, one here at the door, another matching one on the other side. But my favorite place to put it is right here in the middle, and that's because, for some reason, I don't know why, I think of the fact that it's convertible. This actually doesn't look too bad with a giant gun there. It almost looks correct. It almost looks like a giant intake you would see on an F1 car, only it's been replaced with a gun that's going to kill you, and then when you activate the uh, sword component, I think it just looks even better. Uh, it could just be me, though, but that's what that has to offer. While not perfect, these two vehicles are still definitely worth looking at. For Crankcase, I do wish he was a little bit bigger in scale and had a lot less undercarriage, but his whole concept has really got me hooked. As for Sideswipe, I do wish the vehicle had been given a nice metallic sheen, but the overall design is honestly great and he does come with an awesome mech tech weapon. Now let's see if any of these characteristics carry through into robot mode. When transforming Crankcase, you'll soon realize that the designers went a long way to try and fit a medium-sized robot in a rather small SUV. All the tabs and joints that hold this vehicle together are pegged in super tight and require more than just a little bit of force to release them. There are definitely some cool engineering designs when it comes to transforming his legs. However, when transforming the hood of the vehicle, you have to push extremely hard to the point where it feels like you might break the toy just to get it to bend around. Also, the way that those gold dreads are stored have me feeling that one day they will just snap off due to multiple transformations. Overall, this is not the most complicated transformation we've ever seen. However, it is one that involves a lot of minor changes to achieve the desired look. Unlike Crankcase, all the tabs and panels on Sideswipe seem to want to just break off quite easily and don't really stick together too well in vehicle mode. There aren't any new brilliant tricks or designs when it comes to the engineering of this figure, however the entire transformation has been refined to provide a simple and quick transformation that can probably be done without the aid of instructions. 
With Transformation Complete, these two definitely look like very promising figures. Crankcase is definitely a looker when it comes to his robot mode. Thin limbs paired with thick armor plating is definitely a look I can go for. He's got almost virtually no backpack and the proportions on this guy are absolutely great. He's got great paint apps and those eyes are wonderful, all four of them seem to have some faint red light piping, and those gold dreadlocks really bring out so much personality in this guy. As a whole, there really isn't that much wrong with Crankcase. I could say that his hands could use a bit more paint, but then I'd just be nitpicking. Posability on Crankcase is pretty good too. His head is on a swivel that goes side to side. Uh, it can go up and down a little bit. These dreads themselves can actually move, but on mine they're a bit tight and I have a feeling I might rip them if I move them too much. Uh, the shoulders themselves are on a ball joint, but they're also connected on this cool hinge that lets them go up and down, so it adds even more play there. Uh, each elbow is single jointed, his wrists can go in and out, and there is a uh, bicep swivel. The, uh, there is no uh, waist, but each of the hips are on a ball joint, and then there's a thigh cut, a really cool double jointed knee there. Uh, the ankle can do a little bit of movement, and the toes themselves can go up and down. Uh, if there is one major problem, I will say that these joints are all very loose. Uh, it is kind of hard to get him to stand because these waist pieces are actually super, super loose, and they kind of just tend to break away in any uh, poses that have a lot of weight involved on the top end. Also, these parts here can be wiggled around to your liking. As mentioned before, Crankcase does come with this very cool mech tech weapon, and as you can see, there's a mech tech port right there. There's another matching one on his other arm, and that's really the only places you can peg it on in the robot mode. So by simply just uh, putting it in, and then leaving him there, you can see that, like, it's not too big in comparison to the robot itself. I like its size, it matches him perfectly, and again, the extending claw feature is available if you so choose. Uh, you can tell right now though I'm having a hard time posing as these hip ball joints are still trying to just be super loose and kind of fall. Oh hey, he stood. No, oh, never mind. Crankcase's posability is pretty great, but because he has such loose joints, it is hard to make him pose in anything that's truly dynamic. Sure, that can be fixed with nail polish or super glue, but it isn't right that all his joints are completely loose right out of the box. However, I will say that this is still a pretty awesome deluxe class figure and one that you definitely shouldn't overlook. Sideswipe's design has mostly remained the same, however the big issue here again is paint, and it's not so much that he needs a metallic sheen on him, it's just that he needs more differentiation, especially in his chest. He just looks really bland as it is. Posability for Sideswipe hasn't changed much from what we have seen before. His head is again on a ball joint, uh, the way it's designed means that it can only really swivel instead of go up and down too much. Each shoulder is on a single uh, or a double jointed uh, hinge just goes in and out and then forwards and back. However, because this piece does not lock into place, every time you pull down on it, the whole thing kind of just breaks away. The bicep has a bicep swivel, elbow joint, the wrists can come in due to transformation. Again, no waist joint, uh, ball jointed hips, a thigh swivel, these knees that have uh, the sort of forward back and then forward back again on the bottom part. And the ankles themselves can't really do anything, but he doesn't really have feet. He just has these two pieces that help him uh, stand, so that's all right. But really, again, nothing too surprising in terms of posability. Like mentioned before, he does come with the coolest mech tech weapon ever. You'll notice that there are no ports on him in robot mode. I mean, you can argue that there's one here. Uh, and the other one's right there, but those aren't really useful. Instead, his hands have been molded together to hold the gun, so it just kind of attaches in like so, and it looks pretty decent if you ask me. If you put aside Sideswipe's paint issues for the moment, you'll find that this is a pretty neat toy. With his excellent posability, awesome mech tech weapon, and beautiful light piping, you might actually want to pick this guy up. I will admit there have been better sideswipes in the past, like the sidearm sideswipe, and that paint job looks wonderful as it is. But for me, I think sideswipe needs to come with his iconic swords as opposed to just twin pistols, and that's why this Dark of the Moon figure is the one I like best. Overall, these are two of the more interesting figures to come out of the Dark of the Moon toy line, and two figures that you definitely should consider picking up. 
For me, Crankcase is by far the best deluxe class figure that I have seen so far in this line, and Sideswipe I think warrants a purchase just so you can get his cool mech tech weapon. Of course, if his paint job is something that you just can't wrap your head around, I don't blame you because it really does look that bad. It's also worth noting that the pointy fingers you see on my version of Crankcase is a bit of a luxury as Hasbro has gone out and cut them due to obvious reasons. But again, I still think these are great figures and you should definitely pick them up even if you have to wait till they go on clearance. Anyways, there you go. The review for Transformers Dark of the Moon, Deluxe Class Crankcase, and Sideswipe. If I haven't convinced you guys to buy these yet, then hopefully I've entertained you enough that you would want to comment, rate, and subscribe on my channel. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.